Hello there everyone, this is Mr. Brass, and for this video I will be criticizing Michael Shermer and Jerry Coyne, who are well-known atheists. Now before you all inevitably say it, no, I don't think they are loons. Both are smart men and are respected for what they do, and their contributions to science and education can't be understated. I just disagree with them on this particular topic. With that out of the way, both men have been proponents of the capuchin monkey morality argument for a while now. Basically, they use an experiment done with monkeys that seems to show that monkeys know fairness and unfairness, and use that to show evolution breeds morality. I've looked into the experiment and I've found some problems with it, but just so you know, I'm not making this stuff up. Here is the video of Shermer going over the capuchin argument. You know, who doesn't? And um, they taste sweet and so on. And this one sees that this one gets the grape. So he's very excited, like, oh boy, I'm going to get my grape. So he grabs the pebble, gives it to her, and she gives him a cucumber. And, and you'll see how he feels about that. We're getting grape, and you will see what happens. So she gives a rock to us. That's the task. And we give her a piece of cucumber, and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us. And that's what she does. And she gets a grape. And she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now. Gets again cucumber. <laughs> she tests a rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. This line of thinking has been around since the 19th century and really is just a form of anthropomorphizing through analogizing intuitive animal behavior and human actions that come from deliberation. Shermer seems to think, though, that the studies of capuchin monkeys show animals have a sense of fairness and don't like to be screwed over. This study has problems and I'll list them. 1. Just because capuchins and humans may share a sense of fairness, that doesn't mean they receive those notions from a common ancestor. Even if we grant that humans and capuchin are of a recent common ancestry and have a sense of unfairness, it would be fallacious to assume our notion of unfairness comes from those of our evolutionary ancestors. Just think of how much our beliefs have changed from the time of the ancient Greeks. This is thousands of years ago, and many of the practices and morals that Greeks held are are completely the opposite of ours now. Like for example, their views of pederasty with ours. And this is only a couple thousand years ago, so just imagine trying to do that millions of years into the past. Fairness could have been learned and unlearned countless times over that period of time in monkeys, and we have little evidence that this behavior pattern has been a constant with them for millions of years. 2. Anthropomorphizing words like work, which seems to imply that they were knowingly exchanging their labor for something. This willingness to do so can simply be a learned associative behavior. They learned that doing so leads to a desirable end. 3. This sense of fairness being a human universal is debated, and with guys like the UCLA anthropologist Joe Heinrich, it has been questioned more. If you look into this study called Does Culture Matter in Economic Behavior, you'll find that Mashanika people of the Peruvian Amazon didn't have the same sense of fairness and cultural differences that affect these behaviors. This study would show, if taken to its conclusion, that fairness could just be an artifact of culture and not biology. A culture with a group with more individualistic natures will likely have no expectation of good treatment by strangers or to be willing to work with people outside of their group. 4. There are different ways to interpret the studies. It could just be a show of envy and desire for a better reward than what was offered without any notion of fairness. Simple self-interest is also possible for the monkey's behavior, as the monkey sees that a greater reward is possible and thinks that accepting a lesser reward might diminish its chances of getting the greater reward. Even if the unfairness view holds up after more controlled experiments for envy and self-interest, we'd still have to see if they 
have this sense of fairness and that if it corresponds to human behavior, this would be done to make sure the behavior isn't just pure visceral impulse, which would hamper the fairness idea. One must also realize that language has been a big help with us in communicating fairness and we still have trouble with it. That makes it hard to believe nonverbal beings have any intellectual analog of the concept. 5. On a sociological level, it faces problems. It focuses on cooperative behavior and says to have it explained through some good evolutionary reason, which isn't specified. This is pretending to answer a teleological question with an efficient cause, and it leads to absurd conclusions. Suppose I detest unfair treatment because my remote ancestors detested unfair treatment, and they did so for some evolutionary reason. If true, then it is also true I detest unfair treatment treatment because my more immediate ancestors like my parents don't like it. A lot of behavioral norms don't survive one generation, let alone more. Also, explaining the origin of my hatred for unfairness wouldn't tell me why I should continue holding that position. Primates and early humans have been known for their violence, which many today reject, which goes to show we are not slaves of our heredity. The researchers used the work of Swiss economics Ernest Fire and say that it showed people inherently rejected unfairness, but in actuality that's not the case. He wasn't arguing for the universality of a sense of fairness, but of his model which included a desire for fairness as one of several decision-making factors. Another thing is cooperative arrangements among animals can hardly we said to contribute to us now with our cultural institutions. The idea of labor for pay didn't arise until the advent of agriculture, so it is funny it is said the monkeys have that when humans didn't for most of their prehistory. 6. From a history standpoint, it faces problems as they think that they can address the question of whether human behavior is inherited from evolutionary ancestors by looking into history. Only until the 19th century did Europeans widely accept that selfishness was the driving principle of human economic behavior which led to the escalation of laissez-faire ideas and policies. The equal pay for equal work is a principle which we believe in but it is simply an accident of our social order with kings and clergy in the past and to be fair in the present not to be expected to work. 7. On a political level it has problems as it tries to show that liberal capitalist ethics are biologically inherited which dogpiles through history and how western social ideas through military and more have have gone through that. 19th through 20th century imperialism shows us to be wrong. It is impossible to determine the origins of natural human behavior when we can't agree which human behavior is natural, and if the fairness interpretation of the capuchin monkey experiments were successful, it clearly has been uneven, and humans have survived with and without it, so it's hard to see how it's advantageous. Now before I go, I will note I will be referencing two studies, which does bring up some interesting points against these studies. Well, that is all for today. This is Mr. Brass saying goodbye and get wise.